So um, litigation of the total heat burn replacement is commonly uh, done with static, statically stable implant where the prosthesis is uh, fixed to the bone well. The next one is the dynamically stable implant. Uh, what it means is that the hip does not dislocate during the functional range of motion. And the last goal would be to equalize the leg length. Therefore, the patient is to understand that lengthening of the leg sometimes uh, may be required to achieve stable implants, to achieve the uh, goal number two and three. With the leg length discrepancy, uh, most patients come to the surgery, even though they feel that their leg is the same length, if you actually measure them, they usually um, not equal. And the patient needs to understand uh, this, especially, for example, when they have a short leg and they feel it's uh, equal. And after the operation, when we equalize the leg leg, and they feel that the leg is actually longer than what they used to be. So they, they just need to understand this. In terms of instability, uh, we like to talk about patient factors and surgeon's factors. With the patient's factors, uh, those factors uh, listed here are more likely to have a dislocation um, in uh, sorry, female sex, not the actual sex itself. Um, the increasing age, um, diagnosis of the osteonecrosis and fracture of the neck of femur, uh, obese patients, um, those with comorbidities, and those with the preoperative uh, range of uh, motion. With the surgeon uh, factors, um, obviously um, the approach itself, we're going to talk more about the approach later on, the component position orientation, the head size of the uh, femur, the restoration of the offset, preservation of soft tissue integrity, uh, limb lengths, prosthesis impingement, and one of the important, most important, the surgeon experience. The risk of instability is inversely related to the case volume of the operating surgeon. So the more you operate, the less likely you're going to have uh, dislocation. We do preoperative uh, templating, and why? Because we're trying to minimize the leg length discrepancy and to restore the offset. And this would minimize the possibility of uh, dislocation. When we're templating the femoral uh, side, we're trying to, uh, to predict what would be the uh, correct prosthetic size because we want the, the canal to be filled um, with the prosthesis to achieve the axial and rotational stability. Uh, of the component and also we also need to check the component offset to restore the the offset and therefore um, the abductors uh, tension would be correct and therefore less likely to cause dislocation and obviously when we measure the uh, limb, 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 limb length uh, discrepancy on the x rays <coughs> we need to take into account the clinical um, assessment of the patients themselves. The article talks about the approaches, the advantages and disadvantages. For the anterior approach, um, the advantage is the fact that you can directly measure the leg length because the patient is in a supine position and therefore you can uh, measure uh, the, leg, the true leg length. Also, the intraoperative uh, image intensifier can be used to measure the limb length and also to check the component position. The other advantage of this approach is also minimize the soft tissue uh, damage around the hip and therefore preserve the abductor's um, attachment. However, this approach is technically demanding may require a special use of the table and has a steep learning curve. And also there's a risk to the lateral femoral cutaneous uh, nerve. Huddings approach um, has less dislocation rate compared to the posterior approach. However, it violates the abductor mechanism 
some patients uh, might have a post-operative uh, limb because of that. And there's also a risk to uh, superior gluteal nerve that might lead to denervation of uh, nerve that it supplies. And also heterotopic ossification is more common with this approach. Posterior approach, um, the advantage is the fact that it avoids damage to the adductor muscles. However, it has a higher dislocation rate. There's a meta-analysis that shows a six-fold higher compared to the direct lateral uh, approach. Uh, some people suggested with the uh, appropriate uh, component uh, alignment and also the capsule uh, repair at the end, the risk of dislocation would be much less compared to the traditional uh, risk of dislocation with posture approach. And there's also a risk of injury to the sciatic nerve with this approach. So implant uh, positions obviously affect the risk of dislocation. Uh, the safe zone for amputation is 15 degrees plus minus 10 degrees. I think I suggested that and the abduction angle 40 degrees plus minus uh, 10 degrees uh, angle. And um, there's useful landmarks that um, people use. Um, Mostly the transverse acetabular ligament, but listed in there, there are other uh, useful landmarks that can be uh, used. So, um, in terms of the implant position from the femur side point of view, the proper restoration of the offset would reduce the risk of dislocation. There are many ways of achieving uh, increased uh, offset, as uh, this picture shows. Increasing the neck length would um, help with the offset, decrease the neck, uh, decrease the shaft angle, also uh, improve the offset, or shift the trunnion uh, medium would also affect the offset. The other thing that uh, is not written here is the fact that the implant um, design this is when we talk about the head and neck uh, ratio. So the higher the head and neck ratio, the less likely the risk of dislocation. Uh, because with the uh, big head, there are more explosion distance before the hip can dislocate. And with the smaller neck, then the hip is less likely to impinge or cause dislocation. Soft tissue uh, balancing is important. Um, in particular, the tension and the function. This is when we uh, do the templating uh, to help with the restoration of the offset. There are other uh, intraoperative uh, tests that we can do, like shock tests or drop kick tests that would help us in terms of assessing the overall tightness of the reconstruction uh, of the hip. With the soft tissue function, um, in technology is important to have us to achieve a stable uh, hip. Then the article talk about early, intermediate, and late dislocations, uh, defining early as in the first three to six months after the operation. Majority of these patients usually have a single uh, episode of dislocation and usually uh, adequately treated with the uh, cost reduction. With the intermediate dislocation, which is defined between six months to five years after the uh, total hip uh, arthroplasty, again, with this patient, usually a cost reduction uh, is the only uh, treatment uh, that is adequate. However, in the late dislocation, which is defined after five years or more, this patient with the dislocation, late dislocation, they are at high risk of recurrent instability. Uh, usually, there are multiple uh, possible uh, causes, such as uh, polyethylene wear, trauma, declining neurological function, increased soft tissue laxity, and possibly malposition of the component. So what do we do when we have a patient with a dislocation um, of the hip, of the hip joint replacement? We need to look for the causes. And 
what we uh, do is we check the uh, operation, previous operation notes to see what approach was uh, used, the type of soft tissue repair, um, especially when you're doing a hardening approach where you should try to repair the abductors uh, back to uh, where it should be, and also the specific uh, implant that is. Um, the mechanism of dislocation is important, especially the direction of dislocation, whether it's anterior or posterior and the position of the instability. Obviously, if it's unstable in uh, uh, normal neutral uh, alignment, then I need a revision or a treatment of the dislocation. Limb flanks um, also sometimes affect um, the dislocation, whether it was uh, purposely uh, done to equalize the leg without making uh, further the stability of the hip and other causes could be because of the skeletal condition like scoliosis or contractures of the hip um, or neural functions <laughs> affecting the, the limb and the abductors. And what we do after we try to look for this is uh, to do an x-ray. The x-rays we will see the femoral offset, the status of the greater trochanter and the component orientation itself. And with the help of the uh, CAT scan, uh, we should be able to identify the position of the cup itself, where there is too much antiversion, for example. So, what do we do? Uh, these are the treatment uh, options uh, that would include a close reduction of the dislocated hip with or without uh, bracing afterwards, uh, revision of the total hip joint replacement uh, if the cause is the malalignment. Uh, exchanging of modular parts when we have a wear, uh, worn, worn out uh, poly, for example. Um, or another option uh, with a worn out poly is to cement the liner into the raw fixed acetabular shell. If the alignment is not a problem, then other things have been suggested, but obviously uh, this might not uh, resolve the problem. I mean, the use of the bipolar arthroplasty or using a larger head or constraint liner or once seeing the greater trochanter or soft tissue augmentation have been suggested, but this might not resolve the, the dislocation. So, in summary, the surgical management should be considered with patient with the recurrent uh, instability or the initial close reduction. I think most people use either two or three uh, recurrent dislocations before they start investigating, uh, unless it is obvious reasons such as the poly and wear. And the successful operative management is critically dependent on the accurate, accurate identification of the cause of the instability. 